What is up, folks? Welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C. It is Whiskey Wednesday night. We are back here live tonight, uh, this beautiful Whiskey Wednesday night. We got a lot of stuff to go through tonight. I'm really excited uh, to taste through some new bottles, um, some stuff that I've kind of been sitting on trying, do some live reviews for you guys. Uh, we'll go through some new labels, as we usually do. Talk about some uh, some ridiculous, ridiculous um I guess, click baby articles that I've been seeing around uh, the bourbon sphere, the whiskey sphere, uh, the last, I don't know, couple weeks. I mean, some pretty just bad, stupid ones. I, I don't, the stuff that people do for clicks is pretty amazing. Um, and then uh, we'll give you guys the opportunity to uh, to vote on a couple of head-to-heads that I want to do tonight. So I'll let you guys kind of pick what those head-to-heads are going to be. Um, it's something I mentioned a couple, a uh, couple, a few weeks ago, I should say, about you know doing some live heads to heads with uh, with you guys, and you guys get to let me know what you want to put one on one against each other, see which one I like better. So, uh, yeah, pack show tonight. Looking, um, everybody in the chat looking beautiful as always. Let's say hi to some of you guys tonight. William Wiley's in the house. Blind Squirrel. Uh, we have one hell of a five game series starting tomorrow, bro. Yep, I know you, I know we do. <laughs> Gonna get crazy. We're getting some nasty storms up here in northwest Ohio. How's it looking down my youth? The mass and drum so far, so good right now. Um, but yeah, if if I should lose anything like any power or lose the connection, you guys may know why. Um, there are some nasty storms rolling in, so we'll see. Hopefully, it, it lasts tonight. Uh, Dram Yankee in the house. What is going on? Uh, let's see here. One more cast is in here. What is going on, bud? Sugar Kitty, uh, Ben Hernandez, uh, ports some down home for when the show starts. Awesome. Kelsey dropping dimes in the house. What's going on, bud? Top dog. Oh, top dog. I, uh, wanted to give you a quick thank you. I got one of your t-shirts, um, when I was up in Wisconsin visiting Scott, uh, the last few days. So, um, I'll be sporting that on an upcoming episode so uh thank you so much uh bose wine guys here jg of course whiskey cheers whiskey nose whiskey nose what is going on marty party nice to see you as always peter white is here what's going on bud uh craig rito let's see sergey hello from colorado now i finally made it here sergey glad you made it there safe happy birthday to you um it was sergey's birthday not too long ago and he just moved into a new house so Big uh, last week for uh, Sergey. So cheers, man. Dustin Pichel is here. Uh, Adam Hinson, of course. Jeff Perkins. Slapshot. Freshly Blue. Darrell Stewart, the man, the myth, the legend in the house. Uh, Whiskey Juice is here. James Socal. Uh, the Average Drinker. What is going on, Dara? Nice to see you, as always. Uh, the Bourbon Van. We spy some Oregon whiskey in that thumbnail. Cheers, Jason. Yeah, we, we got something here. Um, branch and barrel, um, handcrafted. Oh wait, no, no, this is Colorado. Um, that's Missouri. What's the Oregon whiskey you were seeing in the thumbnail? I'm trying to think what's the one you saw in the, uh, oh, was it the rogue spirits one? Oh yeah. Maybe it's that one. Is it rogue spirits? <laughs> Richie Z what's going on, buddy? Uh, whiskey wishing wells in the house. Uh, let's see. Saucy Shane is here. Uh, Emily Chambers, what is going on? Like, drink, ding, ding. That's right. Hit the like button if you can, guys. Uh, let's see. Sour whiskeys in the house. Eric Bogard, Brian Leon, and a bunch of people coming in. I have to catch up. I'm way behind. Adelio Samuels in the house. What is going on? Charles Tyree saying hump day. All right. Um, oh, shit. There's a lot more people coming in here. Will Hendo Henderson is here. What is going on, Hendo? The bourbon wrench in the house. Dude, bourbon wrench. I get my new drum kit tomorrow after waiting since about, what, December? My new uh, Thomas Star Classic Maple is finally here. I get to pick it up tomorrow night. I actually might do a video on the setup, so I cannot I cannot wait to, uh, to crack that thing open and just start welling on it. Hey, what's got? What's I know this guy. <laughs> what's going on, Scotty Tuhati? Uh, we just spent a, spent a great week with Scott celebrating his 50th birthday, cracked open an Al Young uh, 50th uh, for his 50th birthday. So, man, got to crack open the uh, the, the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club 
Four Roses pick that's going to be dropping pretty soon. Shit, just an incredible, incredible week. Uh, Jason Busey, the Buse is loose. Julie L., what is going on? One of the gorgeous ladies of whiskey. What's going on, Julie L.? Uh, if you haven't checked out uh, her and Dan over at Like Time Whiskey, please do. I think I missed a couple super chats. Let me let me scroll up here. Oh my god, the chat's moving so fast. Thank you guys so much for hanging out tonight. It's been a long week. It's been a long day. I've had a definitely a stressful day at work. That's why I didn't put the live up until a little bit late tonight. I literally had about an hour and a half to throw this together. Uh, but hopefully we'll have a fun night tonight. Just sipping some whiskey and chatting and just having some fun. All right, there's the first one. Jeff Winbush. What's up, Jason? Not a baseball bro, but are you ready for some football? I am ready for some football. This should be a very, very interesting season. Very, very interesting season. So um, actually, we have an idea to maybe do like a, a, a fantasy football draft with uh, some of the channels. So I'm going to see if we can make that happen. But uh, Anthony Squirrel, what's going on, man? Landlord's in the house. Yes, the tiny rogue sample. Yep, that's the one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and Big Vic. Love the shirt, bro. Thanks for supporting. Yes, this is the Big Vic shirt. Big Vic shirt right here happening. There you go. I could fit fit into a medium still. <laughs> it's a little tight, but it's all right. Uh, what's going on here? Hey, Malt Reviews is in the house. What is going on, fellas? Malt Reviews, man. What have you guys been up to? What, what, what uh, crazy bottles you've been sipping on? I have to catch up on some of your video. Malt Reviews, guys, if you want to Watch some of the rarest whiskey reviews you're going to find. Check out Malt Reviews. What is going on, fellas? Uh, let's see. What else we got? Mr. Jigs. Jason, which do you prefer, Chattanooga, ba uh, Bottom and Bond, or the Founders? I'm going to have to go with the Founders so far. That Founders is an absolute hitter of a bottle. Four Roses pick. Do you have a date? Probably early next week. Probably early next week it's going to drop. We'll keep you guys posted. So, uh let's see and that's about it i think we got i think we got i think i caught up a little bit all right so tonight like i said just some uh just some just some bottles we're gonna dive into here some bottles that i got like you know i've been kind of sitting on a few weeks i uh, want to get some first impressions out to you guys um some stuff that i haven't gotten to try yet um including um this missouri straight bottled and bond uh bourbon called ben holiday this, this little bottle has been making its way around the uh, whiskey sphere as well. Um, let me show you guys this. Ben Holiday, they know how to do some marketing. So, you know, most times you'll get a bottle in the mail if you're lucky, you know, and you get a, a, a bottle sent to you. Ben Holiday is not like, we're not just going to send you a bottle in a box. This is what we're going to do. So... Ben Holiday sent this. This this is the box that the whiskey came in. <laughs> you guys see it? This is the box. Then when you open it, you get this like a literal like handwritten note. Look, Jason. Isn't that, that kind of nice? And then you get the DSP five out of Missouri. And then when you open this up, so I had a Glen Cairn in here. Obviously, the bottle was here. It gave you some coasters uh, with all the with a little old fashioned recipe on the box. And then from there, they give you a whole uh, booklet on what Ben Holiday is about. So I mean, that is how you get that's how you get attention <laughs> from a new brand. I mean. I'm not saying like other brands, you know, don't know how to market, but that that's a pretty beautiful presentation for a new a, a, a new brand they're trying to push. So we're going to get into that one in a little bit. But first, I've been dying to crack this open. This is uh, a barrel craft spirit, single barrel cast strength pick selected by Gold Eagle up in uh, Illinois. This is eight year old straight MGP. That's it. There's, there's, this is not a blend. This is an, this is an eight year MGP straight bourbon. I've been, I mean, what's better than a little bit of eight year MGP? Yeah. Got some great smart marketing, if nothing else. I totally agree. Whiskey mountains. Um, 
All I'm saying is you better not put crap whiskey in a box like that. Well, we're going to find out soon here. Oh, yeah. That is beautiful. MGP. Wow, I got a lot more stone fruit on that than I was expecting. It's like caramel covered like grilled peaches in a glass. Well, I mean, I just took my pour, but I forgot something very important. Cheers to you guys. Thanks for hanging out here. Whiskey Wednesday night. Let me know what's in your glass. Damn, that's good. All the citrus. Citrus, apricot, caramel. Again, a lot of that spice and an NGP. Uh, know your whiskey, uh, Mr. Dan Risto, if you're watching. Thank you for uh, grabbing me one of these. This is, um, I'm going to be sitting with that for a little while. Um, all right. I literally just said I'll be your peach. <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, what's up? Bourbon is in the house. Is that a Z barrel? Uh, let's see here. It is. Z5 I4. That actually sounds more like a car. Like if I was gonna make a car, I'll call it the Z5 I4. I think I think I like that a little better. All right, let's get into this whiskey here. So first bottle up, we're gonna we're gonna pour here. We'll save some of the big hitters for last. Um, again, I have the uh, new Bartstown Bourbon Company Fusion Seven, which is probably the most interesting blend that they've done so far. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. We're about to dive into this one tonight. Could this fusion maybe even be up there with the discovery? We'll say I'll, I'll let you guys in on the uh, on the blend in a little bit. We have this uh, new bottle that I got, a new brand out of uh, Colorado called Branch and Barrel, um, curators of fine spirits. This is age distilled and bottled by. Um, by Branch and Barrel Distilling in Centennial, Colorado. This is all grain to glass here, grain to glass. So I'm always up for, for uh, trying someone's new grain to glass uh, product because, uh, you know, this, even if uh, whatever I may think of this, you know, stuff like this is the future of whiskey. This is the stuff that people are going to be drinking, distilling, and uh, aging over the next uh, several years, see what happens to it. And then we we have to dive into this. This is one of the latest bat uh, batches of Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend that I've gotten. Um, this is batch 85, and we'll get into the tasting notes on this one. Um, I also want to revisit uh, this this bur this uh, blah, 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 another Bartson bottle. This Discovery series, which is number eight. Um, I took a I took a couple sips of this last week um, before I went on vacation, and. Um, I'm curious if this has changed much because I feel like with the blend and all the crazy staves that they used in it, 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 it probably has changed a little bit. Uh, let me get into the comments here. Tony bag of donuts. What's going on, buddy? Hi, Jason. I have a seven year barrel pick from Benny's that I absolutely love. Oh, cool. Was that Benny's or Binny's? You mean Binny's? Uh, the one and only fusion I have is a 75 bottle, uh, $75 bottle of corn grain. Uh, Trev, which uh, which batch is that that you have? Because I'm I, I guarantee after you bought that one, you probably didn't buy another. <laughs> uh, was just in Colorado and saw that label. Didn't want to try without knowing. Um, Independent Joe's in the house. What's going, on, Independent Joe? Another great whiskey channel. So many good channels in the chat tonight. Thank you guys for uh, for watching. Cheers, having one of my blends, Nulu One Fourteen Proof Bourbon with a splash of limousine rye. Haha, uh -huh, Nulu Nulu High Rye. Oh, there you go. Maybe a blend to get in entry, future. We'll see. I'm drinking Lucky 7, the proprietor for it. Dara's always drinking hitters, isn't she? Jeez. Yes, blueberries. Pretty much. Um, uh, Mike says, go Braves. <laughs> uh, Grumpy is actually eating a peach. Grumpy old fart. I love that name, and I love the photo. That's fucking brilliant. That's what I look like in the morning. I hate early mornings. <laughs> All right, let's get into this Ben Holiday. So, interesting history, Ben Holiday. Um, so this is a small batch, 100 proof bourbon. All right, let me just kind of cut that up so I don't ruin it here. Um, DSP MO. So this is a DSP out of Missouri. 
uh, and bottled in bonds. So, you know, it's at least four years old. Oh, shit, it's a screw top. I'm, like, yanking on this like it's about to pull out a cork, and it's a screw top. All right. I see you. I see you, Ben Holiday. It's a screw top. All right. You know what? I don't I don't mind a good screw top. All right. So based on the story here. Um, so I was I was kind of learning about this and I didn't really know the uh, the history behind it. Um, oh, shit. Dusty Dan with reviews. <laughs> Ready to drink. Let's go. Thanks for uh, chiming in, Dusty Dan. Everyone go uh, go subscribe to Dusty. Nice to see you, man. We got Mike from Sunday Evening Scotch in the house as well. Love seeing you guys. Daniel Kirby said, what's with all the fucking Braves fans, guys? I'm a Met fan. I don't want to hear about you damn Braves. By the way, the Braves lost today and the Mets won. So just saying. Although yesterday the Mets lost and the Braves won. It's going to go like this all season long, guys. <laughs> At least for the rest of the season. Uh, so this is actually... Now, bottle and bond, we we pretty much we uh, you know we assume that it's four years, maybe five or six if we're lucky. This is six year old bottle and bond bourbon, six years old Missouri straight bourbon whiskey, non chill filtered, DSP MO five. We're we're so used to seeing the DSPs and the KY. Uh, this is number five. This is warehouse C. Oh shit, it's a warehouse C. I'm gonna put it on secondary for millions. I'm only kidding. Um. 21% <laughs> of this came from floor one and 79% of this came from floor five, 100 proof. Um, so just to kind of give you guys a little bit of the background of this, if nobody has heard of this, I had never heard of this, uh, this, this brand until they sent it to me. Um, I don't know if there's any of you watching from Missouri that knows all about this brand. Um, if you do definitely let me know in the chat, I'll highlight your comment. Um, this bourbon is mashed, fermented, distilled, aged, and bottled in Missouri, aged in oak barrels, manufactured in Missouri, and uses only Missouri-grown corn in the mash. So this is all Missouri, baby. All Missouri, which I can definitely appreciate. Um, it's in Weston, Missouri. Our barrels age in two historic ironclad rickhouses that are unique to the region. These warehouses are not climate-controlled, allowing for differences between the top and bottom floors as much as 30 degrees and 10% humidity. This distillery was founded in 1856 by brothers Ben and David Holliday on land first charted by Lewis and Clark in 1804. Um, the Holliday brothers hailed from Kentucky and knew the limestone water running through the property would make very fine whiskey. Um, they've changed names and ownership several times in the decades since and has been known as McCormick Distilling Company uh, since 1942. After a $10 million renovation of the original still house, they are making bourbon on site again for the first time in 30 years and resurrected the holiday name in the process. So very cool story. Another kind of, um, uh, you know, resurrection story of a of a brand, you know, forgotten a little bit, changed. I mean, that's happened so much time in bourbon history, brands that change names, brands that go away, um, and then brands that have gotten resurrected over the past several years, brands that change owners. I mean, look at Green River. Uh, when it went away, it changed hands, uh, and, and now it's it's flourishing again. And now it's owned by Barstown Bourbon Company. So this is just what happens in the in the world of bourbon. Um, Jason, is that batch one or two? Let's see here. This is how would I know which batch it is? One hundred proof, small batch, the original. I'm uh, looking at all the deets, all the details. It says spring 2016, spring 2022, age six years. I don't see a batch number anywhere, but who cares? Let's let's try this stuff, man. Great history, great presentation, as you guys saw. All the stories. Uh, Warehouse C survived the tornado in Missouri. I guess we're not in Kansas. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Um, hey, I've been, hey, I've been here last time I was there and they had just barreled their first whiskey. Got to see barrels one through 10 in the Rick house. One and two were signed by owners and distillers. That's cool, Jeffrey. That's very, very cool. Any idea where this stuff is for sale? Uh, maybe they kind of left a, a thing here. Oh, transparency. Every batch is handcrafted. Um, each, each label is hand stamped with the bottled on date. 
all the floors you're going to need to know. Um, I don't see a mash bill anywhere, so I'm not really sure what the mash bill on this is. Um, ah. Hey, if it's good, it's good. Let's try it. So far in the nose, this smells like a, you know, if you're a Kentucky bourbon fan and you think uh, bourbon should only be made in Kentucky, this has a very Kentucky vanilla caramel, very heavy, rich nose so far. A little bit of bright caramel. There's like a nuttiness to it. it it's, I don't know, maybe like Heaven Hillish a little bit. And hint of like juicy fruit gum. You get some of like that bright fruit note. Man, it's got a really nice nose. It's 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 got a lot going on. I'll say that. It's it's got all the you know it's it's got all the like the usual notes you'll want in a good whiskey. Uh, Jeffrey, do you know what the price of this bottle is? I didn't see any of these details. So if you know what what they actually charge for this bottle. Uh, let's see. Hey, Jason. Horse of Burma, thank you again for the super chat. Drinking Lucky 7 the Hold Up. Tastes like cherry cough syrup. Then it gives way to other good flavors. I ordered a Kalbeg Wood Tree for coming from England. Horses and bourbon, dude. Wait till you try that whiskey. That Kalbeg Wood. Oh, my God. It's fucking crazy. It is so damn good. Uh, so Joe says 73 corn, 15 rye, 12 malted barley. I like a good high uh, rye corn, uh, high rye content, I should say. And it sells for about 60. Okay. It's about 60. Yeah, I might be out of focus. It's the uh, sometimes my camera focuses up on the bottles and not me. I'll try to move these back a little bit here. There we go. That should work. It's kind of has like this beam slash like Heaven Hill type thing going on. If I could, if I could kind of pinpoint a flavor profile or a nose that it reminds me of to kind of help you guys out. $55.99. Okay. Mash and drum says 60-ish. Adam Dorm. Okay. So you're about 60 bucks with tax and all that. Uh, did you happen to try the new Red Breast Kentucky Oak? Not yet, but I'm picking up a bottle this week. All right, let's try it. All right, so the palette is completely unique, which I think is a good thing. Um, there, there's some grain forwardness there. You get the grain. Classic flavors here, vanilla, caramel, nothing off-putting here. Need another sip of that one. It's funky. Not in a bad way. It's, I'll say this, for the average drinker, it might be lacking a little bit of sweetness. It's got a heavier oak presence than I thought would be in the mix um, for a six-year-old whiskey. So, you know, I'm not too, I'm not too, uh, you know, not too fluent on what the weather is like in Missouri, but if there's that type of fluctuation, this got a good amount of oak influence over six years. Bubble gum, oak, a little bit of spice. That juicy fruit note is still there. But the more I'm sipping this, the more like bubble gum it goes. Totally goes bubble gum for me. There's a slight like medicinal note to it as well. I'm not sure if that's maybe some cherry trying to work its way in, but it's not all the way cherry. So, man, I'm not really sure what to, what to think about this one. <laughs> this one has me kind of thrown for a loop. Yeah, it's a different bird for sure. Yeah, it does have a nice color. Let me uh, pour a little bit more here for you guys. 
again, I mean, you're you're working with uh, Missouri Grain, Missouri everything on this, which is I think kind of cool. Can make kind of your signature whiskey. There's the color of it right there. That'll focus up. So you kind of see here for a six year old whiskey, it's got a really nice color to it. There's the Ben Holiday uh, Glen Cairn that they sent along with it. Um, so medicinal bubble gum equals Pepto. Eh, I don't know if Pepto is the right word. I, I keep going back to being surprised how much the oak influence is in here. It's nice, though. I don't mind oakiness. It's like caramel. There's a nuttiness to it. It's bubble gum. I do think there's a slight medicinal cherry note kind of working its way here through the back end of this. Good spice, good palate. It's creamy. It's a solid bourbon. Again, this is now you're looking at reg uh, regionality. You know, when I do a review like this, everyone automatically assumes, oh, he doesn't like it. It's not that I don't like it. It's just it's different. It's just it's a different type of animal. And it, it's like one of those things where unless you try it yourself, I'm not really sure how to, you know, I I always don't go into a whiskey saying oh, it's good or it's bad. I try to reflect what I think I enjoy and what other drinkers may enjoy just based on my experience. And like for me, even though I wouldn't call this a traditional bourbon flavor profile you see out of Kentucky, it's a little less sweet. It's a little more oak forward. There's not as much... Um, vanilla caramel going on. It's a little bit more bubble gum and oak and uh, a little different, not a medicinal cherry, but there, there's a, there's a cherry note in there. It's just like, it's like a different cherry. See, and on that sip, it got very floral. I just got like a, like a lavender note on it. That's crazy. Where did that come from? Maybe as it sits here and opens up a little bit. So when I say lavender, think um, think like uh, Leopold Brothers, like Three Chambers Rye, how that has a very, very distinct like florality to it. This isn't a rye, so I'm just saying like that type of a, of a note to it. It's got a very unusual floral type of aspect to it as well. I can't believe how floral this just went. It went from like bubblegum and oak to like sipping like, I don't know, a, a, a friggin' thing of roses. A little bit of sweetness on the back end. The sweetness is more on the, on the back half of this than it is on the front. The front, you're getting the oak. You're getting that floral component. You're getting a little bit of bubblegum. Again, the oak, and then once it hits mid-palate, a little bit of citrus, and then you get like the kiss of sweetness on the back end that you're used to with the bourbon. I'm going to let this sit because I feel like this needed a little air time to really open up, and first impressions are, are, uh, are, are weird but promising. <laughs> Is it on par with Hidden Barn? That's a good question. I think Hidden Barn is actually a little bit more raw and funky compared to this. I don't have much Hidden Barn left, but I'll take a little swig of this here. Oh, yeah. Compared to Hidden Barn, this is more traditional. Holy shit, that Hidden Barn got way fruitier than I remember. Maybe that's because I'm coming off this. It just it, isn't it crazy how like you know you have one whiskey then you try it next to each other how it completely changes. Hidden barn, like I said, you could taste like every part of the process, and I we talked about this with Jackie Zykin. If you guys didn't watch that interview, she was pretty transparent about everything that goes on from soup to nuts, and I feel like you could taste it. I feel like you could taste the yeast and the grain. This I will say is a lot creamier than this is because it's double pot distilled. Um, it might taste a little bit dirtier and raw, but it's, it's, it's double pot distilled. You could, you could taste and feel that grain in it. Um, and, and these kind of like weird fruit flavors in the back end, this Ben holiday compared to that, 
excuse me, is way more traditional, I think. Like flavor profile wise. One last sip here. Yeah, it's it it went from bubblegum oak to floral and oak. There's a very, very I'm I'm curious to see like what the surrounding area is like where that where it's being uh, aged. I feel like it really has picked up a lot of floral components in the taste profile. The oak is still there. It's a little bit spicy. You know what? Uh, it's if you're a Kentucky purist, I don't think it's going to be for everybody. But I think what Ben Holiday is making, which is you know, it's, you can only respect the grain the glass mentality. And trying to give people stuff that's, you know, ubiquitous to Missouri only. Like only in Missouri, you're going to find everything surrounding it is Missouri. So I applaud them for that. Um, I'm going to probably do a full review on this one. They did send me that beautiful box. Um, and then uh, eventually, you can see how this is down the line. So I'm going to kind of leave this to the side here. And I'll leave this right in the box, see how it goes. Um, Remander saying, Jason, you should come down to one of Minnick's whiskey dinners at Watch Hill proper. By the way, I'm sipping on a Catoctin Creek. Catoctin Creek. That is a fucking hitter of a rye right there. I actually have a bottle right here, man. Woo. If none of you guys have had any Catoctin Creek yet, Catoctin Creek. I always mess that shit up. You talk about a rye that's grain forward with tons of flavor and, and rawness to it. And I mean, this, this is it. This Catoctin Creek is just an absolute beast. I definitely got it. You know, I still haven't met friend in person yet at all the times we've done streams together, um, collaborated together. I haven't met the dude in person. I got I to gotta meet him, man. Uh, holiday pick for M&J Whiskey Club. Head west, young man. <laughs> what cigar batch is that? It's uh, 85. It's 85. Listen, Adam, I'm just going to say this. Any cigar batch that you can get, you you buy it especially if it's below 200 because it's honestly one of the, the best finished whiskeys, bourbons you're going to find on the planet. It really is. Now, they are different from batch to batch. So you do – listen, everybody seems to miss this part. Honestly, go to josephmagnus.com. All you have to do is Google – just Google um, Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend Batch, whatever it is. You will get a page with Nancy Fraley's tasting notes, which are, it's like reading a, a library of tasting notes in one bottle. She breaks down every single bottle, exactly what she's tasting. And as a reviewer and someone that, that tastes a lot of whiskey, I can only hope to get to that level one day. You know, I look at Nancy like, like how the fuck does she even like pick that out? And then when, when you kind of put two and two together, you're like, I do taste that. I know a lot of it is probably, you know, um, you know, by association and there's there's a lot of influence that happens while you're reading. But at the same time, there's I don't know. She has a way of making you think about whiskey a little bit differently and the flavors you're picking up and how she picks it up from batch to batch. Um, some people just see a cigar blend and they buy it right away. Some people will look up the different uh, flavor profiles and go off of what Nancy writes. But I think a lot of people miss that part that. She writes those tasting notes each for each and every batch, makes them available online. So you don't have to do too much guessing anymore when you're staring at a bottle of Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. So, and I, I said that in my review, it's, it's a great way, I think, to, uh, you know, to navigate spending about 200 bucks on a bottle. Because I've had one last year that was very rye forward. It was like savory and spicy and not like your sweet type of Joseph Magnus. Um, so I'm not sure if there would be a lot of people that would like that one versus one of the sweeter ones. Uh, some that get more dark fruit focus, some that get more like chocolate and dark focus, like coffee. It really depends on what that mix of casks does, the Armagnac and the Kona and everything together. Um, but there's ways, you know, use that website and read her write-ups because 99.9% .9 of the time, those are going to be spot on tasting notes, probably 100% of the time, to be honest. Um, let's see here. Road trip, buy it. Oh shit, 350. Yeah. Yeah, all the notes are on the website. Yep. 
Just pulls bottles out of hats. Yeah, they're just around me. They're just around. I have a batch 82. Um, let's see here. This got my first cigar, but batch 85. I guess I should crack it open with you tonight. Yes, Paul, you should. You should. Um, I would be able to get a Pappy Van Winkle 15 at retail before I ever laid eyes on Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend. Well, Peter, I mean, Joseph Magnus doesn't have, you know, the best, you know, distribution. And you got to remember, they're still dealing with very old whiskey from MGP. So, um, you know, even that makes it even, you know, more rare. Nancy will be coming on Whiskey Nose in September. Oh, dude, Marty. That's a party right there. Just ordered the Len Quintana XO Aficionados pick. What are your thoughts? Jeff Jeffrey, what can I say? I'm going to say I love it. I help blend it. Um, I help blend that pick. So this is, uh, speaking of pulling bottles out of hats, this is what we're talking about. This just went live on Sealbox uh, last week on Friday. And I think it went fully live uh, uh, actually today, I think, or the, or, the, or the day before. I forgot. But this is the... Um, uh, this is the Whiskey Aficionados pick. I collaborated with Rare Bird 101 on this uh, with Jay um, and John over at uh, the Aficionados group. Um, also, we we got blending help. As you saw last week, we had um, Ryan and Kenny from Bourbon Pursuit help blend this. It's And you guys heard how rare it is. There's there's none of this that's out there. A, a cast strength blend of three high-aged Armagnacs in one bottle. Um, it's a completely custom uh, label, and we are uh, we couldn't be more excited about it. I love it. Did you guys know this trick? Here we go. About to blow your mind right now. Like, I'm probably a dumbass right now because I did not know this. So first time you get this bottle. Now, if you guys know PM Spirits who do this bottle, also if you guys know Mic Drop, which is a, a pretty popular brand uh, a few years ago, they're kind of – I don't know, lost a little bit of popularity, I guess. Um, but they were putting out some hitter bottles from Source Whiskey. And they have like these glass corks, these glass or acrylic tops, I should say. Uh, so so what you do is like most people, just because that's what they're used to, you kind of twist it and you're like, I can't pull it out. Like, what the hell? And, you know, people are looking for grips and all this shit, how to do it. All you got to do, maybe that'll focus up. See that? What you got to do is use the two thumb method. Take your two thumbs, pop it up and out. It's that fucking simple, guys. I'm sitting here trying to pull this. I'm using like everything I have to yank this thing out of the friggin' bottle. And they're like, all you got to do is just use the two thumbs. I mean, I felt pretty stupid when I saw that because that's really what happened. I actually, uh, Jason, help me with a decision. Would you rather have two Joseph Magnus cigar blends or one Parker's heavy char wheat? Mm. You know what? I did like the wheat, but I like the bourbon better. I'd probably go for the two Joseph Magnuses. Um, black bourbon family in the house. Raise your drinks up casually. Nice to see you, Jay and Brandy. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Any recommendations for top whiskey bars in New Orleans heading out there September 22nd? I wouldn't really know, but anybody in the chat, help Keith Spicer out. Um, let's see here. Got the text. To, oh, all right. So it was today, landlord, right? Got a sample of the standard Joseph Magnus. Quite interesting from a Scotch drinker perspective. Those 45 minutes kept changing. Very nice mash and drum. Yeah, the, the, even the regular Joseph Magnus, you're just going to get a, a, a wealth of you know, flavors from that, those three different casks. Um, bada boom, bottle bing. Yeah, bottle hacks, <laughs> basically. Kelvin, uh, sorry, Kevin Elizondo, just love the channel. You deserve more subscribers. Keep up the great work, man. Yeah, I just hit 69,000 a couple days ago, working my way to, you know, 70 will be a nice milestone, but I think when I'm three quarters of the way to 100,000, 75,000, uh, I think I might have a little celebration for that one. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping. I got some big plans for some other videos coming up soon. A little bit of uh, clickbaiters. That seems to help growth more than anything. I'm just not a big fan of doing clickbait videos because I put a ton of work into them. They take me a long time. Like I don't know if you guys saw the uh, $400 collection for beginners video. Like the perfect $400 bourbon collection for beginners. 
that video took me like weeks to put together because I did history research on every single bottle, made sure I had it all right. And then I launched that video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that video. I'm going to kind of flip it on its head. And I'm going to do it for 2022 um, because honestly, the couple Buffalo Trace bottles that I had in that mix are probably like gone now. So I'm going to probably do this without Buffalo Trace now because Colonel Taylor, small batch, which I had in the list, Eagle Rare, which I had in the list, you really can't find easily anymore. So I'm going to take them off and try to like reinvent the list. So that's one that I'm doing. Jason, how do you determine what bottles to bunker? Really right now it's based on uh, scarcity and it's based on uniqueness. If it's unique enough and it's scarce enough, if I could get a backup, I bunker it. Um, generally, most other stuff that I get, I don't really bunker. I just kind of have a bottle. If I enjoy it, maybe I'll get another one. But I just have too many bottles right now to, you know, bunker everything I can. So just it really just matters on the uh, on the thing. How many bottles do you guys buy a month? I need my wife to stop hating. Well, I'm I'm I don't go by me because you know I just. I do this as a, you know, as a, a side job. <laughs> so in order to, so I'm buying bottles all the time, everything I can do here. Um, let's see here. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. Uh, I enjoyed the hell out of that video. Oh yeah. Appreciate that, Kenneth. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to probably reinvent that. Celebration at Sagamore. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Joseph. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm hoping Paul for sure. Um, that's a great video. Love you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to bring that back to that video still. Uh, just kind of do it in a different way. I have to kind of think about how I'm gonna do it. Um, let's see here. I'm just ready to celebrate 3K. Dara, you just keep doing what you're doing, and you're gonna you're gonna hit 10K sooner than you think. Don't worry about it. What? No blends? Yeah, blends will probably be left off that list. <laughs> Pull the trigger for 4K21. I hear it's a mid white mid winter's night ram on steroids. So pretty excited. Yeah, that's basically how I uh, that's basically how I described it. Uh, it's a it's a high age rye whiskey finished in a port barrel. It's delicious stuff, man. Jason, I think you mentioned that you and Scott were trying cigars this last trip. How did that go? Are there plans to release any to the group? Um, yeah, we are going to be working on a, a specific blend. I can't. I don't want to. You know, Google and YouTube is kind of weird with cigars right now. I don't, I don't want to get too much into it on a live stream, but um, we are working on a custom something for the group to go along with the whiskey. So, yeah, should be uh, should be pretty cool. All right, let's get to the next bottle here. So, um, you know, let me try this uh, this thing here out of uh, Colorado, since we're kind of staying in the craft family here. Another grain to glass. So this is Branch and Barrel. Now, they sent me this. Um, again, oh, look, we're going to get tested right away. The acrylic top. Come on. Look at, I did not even – that was – that's all just timing. That's that's the magic of YouTube. It happens live, baby. Here we go. Boop. That's how you do it, Smalls. <laughs> A little uh, reference from one of my favorite baseball movies of all time. The Sandlot. So many good lines in that movie. Come on. So many good lines. Um, let's see here. Someone should do a bourbon club barrel pick tournament. Man, Joe, are there, any, are there that many Bland's picks out there? You know, I could probably do it if I reach out to my buddy Dominic, who is on this uh, channel. He has so many uh, good Bland's. I could probably do a, a tournament of some sort. Trade a Bland's for uh, ER in a red spot. I think that's a good trade. That's a hell of a trade. Uh, missing the cork pop. Yeah, that's the one thing you don't get, though. You don't, you don't get the nice cork pop with the acrylic uh, corks. All right. So let's see what they sent along here. Sorry, guys. This fell. I mean, not much info here. The beginnings of Branch and Barrel started with three friends, Ryan, Tom, and Scott, sitting in the backyard with a homemade water heater, a homemade water heater still, and a dream. After creating a delicious home-brewed whiskey aged on branches from that same backyard, they decided to open a distillery with a DYI spirit, focusing on quality and transparency while using only local grains. Almost a decade later, we hope you enjoy every sip and sip of this fully sustainable, small batch, pure Colorado bourbon. All right. Let's see what you got, Colorado. Colorado, 
has been making amazing whiskey for a long time now. I mean, Stranahan's. Uh, well, I mean, Old Elk is sourcing, but they're based in Colorado. Um, 291. Um, uh, what are you, what's their names? Uh, oh, God. Now I can't think of any of them. Um, what's that? A.D. Laws, another pretty uh, good uh, Colorado uh, distillery. Leopold. So just it's been happening in Colorado for a little while. Yeah, you guys need to rewatch. Yeah, you guys have to. Yeah, Laws 291. That, the Laws one was the one I couldn't think. I knew the square bottle. I just couldn't. It couldn't hit my mind here. Yeah, Colorado, it's the water. It is the water. It's always about the water. Oh, yeah, Breckenridge and... Well, High West is Utah, right? High West is Utah, not Colorado. Aspen and Company. Yeah, Leopold Brothers. Yeah, see, I got them. I got them. Wow, now this is sweet. This is very sweet on the nose. Much different than that Ben Holiday. Um, let's see what it says here. Um Batch 19, it's 90 proof, if I didn't mention that, sorry. Um, spring water to prairie corn, no, uh, let's see here, no specific mash bill here either. All right. Oh, man, this is a lot sweeter on the nose. Wow, this is almonds and, man, what is that other new one I'm getting here? Man, almonds and, like, blood orange. Not not regular orange. This is, like, a blood orange note. Man, where's the... Man, this is, this is really unique. A little bit of, like, apple... Uh, apple pie going on in it, a little cinnamon too. This has a really nice nose. At 90 proof, I'm not expecting like a huge, you know, flavor punch, but you never know what 90 proofers. 90 proofers can either be really flat or sometimes they can surprise you and be really flavorful. So let's give it a go. That is super sweet and super fruity. There's a lot going on on that palate when it comes to... Now, I'll say this. It's thin. It leaves the palate very, very quickly. Like, it's... I mean, it hit my palate, and then it was gone. I got, like, a burst of flavor, and then it went. Um, which is, you know, which I obviously don't like. It is 90 proof. Uh, Todd Ritter, folks are interested in Fred's doing another charity Berman auction for the Eastern Kentucky flood victims, donating about 1970 old crow for the cause. Yes, Todd, we'll definitely be bringing that up. Uh, Fred Minnick, because of the Eastern Kentucky uh, floods and what's happening, um, I don't know if you guys remember Fred last year raised a ton of money for the tornadoes and all the damage it ripped across Kentucky. Uh, now he's doing a little bit something, you know, along those same lines for the Eastern Kentucky flood victims. Um, Todd, if you have the information in the chat, please uh, pull it up or uh, feel free to drop it in there. Um, yep, absolutely. Uh, Discovery Batch 9 isn't out until September. So Fred got a sample from the distillery somewhere, and then he posted the video about it. So he got he got pretty um, pretty lucky on that aspect. Good thing with Miss Wrench having COVID is she's asleep before 9. Time for a drink. Oh, man, hope she's feeling okay. Shit, that sucks. Uh, didn't Chad and Sarah see Calumet 16? I just picked up a Calumet 16 at Total Wine in Wisconsin for like 130. I mean, I'm like a 16 year old bourbon for 130 bucks. I'm buying that all day. It is super sweet. I mean, this is like drinking actual like. It's like Swedish fish and Sour Patch Kids <laughs> all together. It's super sweet on the palate. 
But again, it goes through really fast. Um, you get a, a, a hint of oak. That apple is still there. Hmm. Man, it is super sweet. It's got a hint of like this funk to it, almost like a Texas whiskey does. But not not as not nearly as harsh or as bold as that. I'll give you guys a little quick look at the bottle here. Um, Jason, have you had the Hardens Creek yet from Beam? No. I was not able to score a bottle of that. So um, if anyone has samples of it, let me know. I'll definitely – I was supposed to get a couple bottles of it or a bottle of each, but they haven't dropped. They haven't come yet. I'm not sure where, where they are what's happening with it. So if anyone has samples of that, let me know. Uh, John Walker, Wisconsin, you trying to Jay Henry when you were up there? Not, not this trip, but I'm a huge fan of Jay Henry, another Nancy Fraley uh, distillery for sure. Yeah, I know Todd. Todd, yeah, you have some. I might need to. I might need to go to Todd for some of that stuff. Yeah, very apple, very sweet. If you guys like a very very sweet profile on whiskey, then this is your jam. It doesn't get like sweet like uh, like a light whiskey does, where it gets like super high corn sweet or super high. Um, uh, like butterscotchy or candy corn or even like like high vanilla. This is more of like a sugary sweet almost on the palate for this one, at least for me right now. But we'll get back into the, that one. In the meantime, I'm going to pour this Bardstown uh, Fusion. Uh, let's see here. It's a pretty sweet design. Love the tree trunk. On the Yeah, it's a cool design bottle. It's almost got like a, uh, dare I say, blue run. It's got like a blue run feel to it without the butterfly. You guys seeing that? It's got like a butter, it's got a blue run type thing going on, but no butterfly. <laughs> um, sipping on Peerless tonight. Jason, both of the bean batches are here in North Carolina. Yell at me. Yeah, Whiskey Nose, grab them. If you see him, grab them. I'm happy to do a review on that. Been curious about those things. I know it's pricey. I know they're going to be, it's like 300 bucks, but. Uh, what the hell y'all doing here? Oh, what's going on, Joseph Brazzers? All right. So while this is opening up in the old mash and drum, Glenn, it's time for what to see at the TTB. Dun, dun, dun. All right, what do we got, guys? Some fun, fun labels coming through the TTB in the last week. Um, let's lead off with one of my favorite distillers out of Nevada, Fray Ranch. Why did I say Nevada like that? I don't know. I think I was like trying to recreate the old "Let's Get Ready to Rumble" guy. Didn't really quite work out. Not one of my, not one of my best uh, impressions. <laughs> All right, Frey Ranch, Malted Grain Series. I am all about this. Six years, six month, single malt bourbon whiskey. Love this. Um, looks like it's going to be 100 proof. I'm not sure what the um, – this is going to be distillery-only releases. But uh, you talk about malted grains. Uh, this is when you kind of malt it to bring either a little bit more sweetness out of it or try to get a little bit more of a, of a darkness to it. Uh, definitely changes the flavor profile. If you guys have had any of the malted stuff from um, from New Rift, the malted rye, I mean, this stuff is just, if you do it right, it's absolutely delicious. So really excited to have Frey Ranch uh, doing some of that. Uh, this is their next one. They're also doing a malted corn uh, whiskey. Again, these are 375 milliliter bottles. So I'm guessing these will be distillery only or in small supply. But I mean... Anytime you see like a um, an up and coming distillery doing some of these, you know, off the cuff releases, maybe they end up turning into um, full releases. So I, I think uh, there's a lot to be excited about there. Um, let's see here. 
Man, Jason, I just opened my B522. Definitely not getting what you got. All cinnamon and spice. Not as light as I thought it would be. Pretty good. Um, yeah, Adam, keep sipping on that one. The first couple sips were good, but the more you sip it, I think the lighter it gets. But I will say it has gotten a little better over time. So, Master and Drum, instead of getting ready to rumble, that sounded more like Jeff Dunham peanut. Yeah, exactly, Sugar Kitty. That's what I'm saying. Oh, honey, you got me friggin' those friggin' the thing of roses. Thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I think B522 is pretty spicy. I used to really like B521. Yeah, B521 was a hitter of a batch. I like that batch. Yep, you're right. Second and third sip, it falls off. Yep. Uh, bottle swig, what is this BJ's? Bottle swig, what is this BJ's? Did I bottle swig something? Oh, the... Uh, I only bottle swig this because I couldn't... I didn't want to waste another glass, and I only have a tiny bit of this left. So... Yeah, I don't... I'm not as hardcore as the junkies. I don't do full bottle swigs. <laughs> so... Um, all right. Have you had any Westland single malt whiskey in the Master Drum? Yeah, John, um, uh, I actually picked a cast strength one for the Master Journey Whiskey Club, and it's one of the best whiskeys we've done. Um, it was a uh, it was a pure ex bourbon, 100 and, 128 proof, I think it was. It's all like apple, cinnamon, pineapple, and chocolate. It is one of the best uh, picks we've done. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Uh, it's still great. Though. Yeah, I think it's still great too, for sure. All right, next one. Now we talked about the cast strength pipe dream last week from Redwood Empire. We said there was a lost monarch coming, and here's the label: lost monarch from Redwood Empire cast strength. This is the Burai blend, 117.2 proof, uncut and unfiltered, straight from the barrel. Um. Aged for a minimum of three years in the temperate climate of the Northern California coast. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, aged at least three years. Yeah, this is a blend. It's 55% rye and 45% bourbon. So I am all over this. Redwood Empire, I think, especially that Lost Monarch, is one of the most underrated bottles that people, especially here in Ohio, I don't know about your area, but people in Ohio just walk right by that shit, and I'm happy as shit to... Just keep buying them because nobody pays attention to it. So delicious stuff. Cannot wait for that one. Uh, you mentioned Catoctin Creek earlier. Uh, cool thing to have a bottling workshop once a month where you get to completely bottle the round stone rye. That's just frigging cool. That's just – that's how you connect with uh, with buyers right there. Uh, yeah, the Lost Monarch is late September, early October. Yeah, I cannot wait for that one. Um, yeah, it's still actually available at Keg and Bottle, our pick. It's one of the few picks we still have available. I think most people kind of stood away from it because it's a, you know, it's an American single malt. It's not bourbon. So that's, that's how it goes. What do you think your best barrel pick has been so far on this journey? That's a really good question. Um, I think the way the rye would probably be that, that Nashville, the Nashville rye has to be the most unique rye that we've done. Um, the, uh, the rye actually we just picked that just came out, the Taconic rye, I would actually put right up there too. It's still available too on Sealbox. Not a lot of people paid attention to that one because it was right before our Old Forester uh, bourbon pick. And as far as the bourbon goes, man, there's so many. I don't know. Depends what mood I'm. The Nashville, again, the Nashville Bourbon Company uh, bourbon that we did, people went absolutely bananas for that one. Um I really enjoyed the Elijah Craig barrel proof pick we did. I think the Driftless Glen, the Driftless, uh, the Driftless Glen, um, Black Forest Bugaboo that we did came out amazing. Um, oh, actually, here I have the, I have our. Hold on one second. The uh, the new loose spice jam that we picked, incredible finished bourbon. Yeah, this is our pick. Uh, that This is the West one that we did. Cast number 901. Um, there it is. This is our pick. Uh, we have a little Macho Man Randy Savage going on. It's called the Cream of the Crop with a Screw Top. Because if you guys do not know that yet, Westland is all Screw Top. So, man, I haven't had that one in a while. I might pour some of that later. That's good shit. Um, yeah, just too many picks to to end I'll say this, the Four Roses pick that we did that's about to come out might be 
that's at least in my top three right now. That thing is delicious. So a lot to look forward to. Uh, falls off chair, three, two, one, almost. Yeah, the four roses is special. Um, all right. Next one up. You guys hear about this one. ZZ Top is coming out with a uh, with a bottle it's called Trace Ombres. This is basically a uh, a kind of an ode to ZZ Top. Obviously, um, you see the logo on the bottom. Uh, this little old, so this is going to be a Texas whiskey. It's non chill filtered, uh, three grains, three mash pills, and three years baked in the southern heat. That little old man from Texas comes together again for the release of Trey Ombre's ZZ Top blend of straight bourbon whiskey, harkening back to classic Southern blues amplified by the crunch of Texas rock and roll and saturated in the tone of American single malt. Here's to memories formed over a full glass with friends at your side and the music turned up loud. Here's the breakdown. So you actually have, uh, you have some uh, two mash pills from Indiana. Uh, and then it's going to be mixed with a, with some of that, you know, that 100% corn whiskey from Texas. So really interesting blend there. And then here is the a blend of straight bourbon whiskey finished in American single malt. So that's all comes and it's finished in the American single malt cask. That is going to be a crazy, crazy um, taste profile, I think. So I cannot wait. Jeffrey Wack in the house. What is going on, man? They are short on ombre, Rip Dusty. Yes, Rip, rest in peace, Dusty. We did lose a ZZ Top member, Dusty. Uh-oh. Uh, so Horse and Bourbon says, FEO Blue Run. We have some uh, – we, we have. it's not a live stream unless we have a bot. You guys can take them out. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Let's see. Yeah, somebody take them out. Please do. There's plenty of wrenches in the uh, in the house tonight, so take out those uh, those guys if you could. I appreciate you. A big, a big, um, a big shout out to all the beautiful wrenches out there getting rid of these folks. Uh, let's see here. Next up, Starlight. You guys know Starlight for their crazy finishes. Looks like they're getting into ice wine, ice wine barrels. So for you guys that don't know what ice wine is, ice wine, they basically, uh, before they mash the grapes, they actually freeze them. So when the uh, actually Angels Envy when they did their uh, their special Angels Envy um, you know ice wine cask release that's basically well it was it was it was ice cider not ice wine so what they do is they freeze the apples so when you mash them it comes out the the liquid inside comes out way more concentrated and the same goes for wine so they'll make uh, uh, wine with these ice wine casks usually you drink it cold. And it looks like they're going to be finishing some bourbon whiskeys and ice wine, which is usually pretty sweet. So ice wine usually comes off extremely sweet, a lot sweeter than a standard bottle of wine. So for all of you guys with a sweet tooth out there, that might be uh, one you're interested in. So see what you guys are saying about that bottle. Have a couple starlights. Love them. Yeah, the two starlights that we did, Scott and I, the the She's My Sherry Pie turned out. I love. I actually already killed them out of the bottle. Well, it's almost gone. I love that one. Uh, Jason, Elijah Craig, B522, or Calumet 16? Who went? Calumet 16 for me, for sure. Calumet 16 is an extra level like spice that the B522 doesn't have. Um, Lost Monarch is good. It's not going to change anyone. Yeah, it's not going to change your life. But for a $35, $40 whiskey on the shelf, it's a damn good pour. Technically, ice wine, they don't freeze them if they do it right. They actually are supposed to pick the berries when they freeze on the vine. Then press Amelia concentrates the sugar. Yeah, I mean, John Harris, if you're probably more, you know, educated on ice wine than I am. So if that's how they do it, then it's all about getting those grapes cold or whatever in, in the process at some point to get that concentrated liquid out of it. Um, be correct, they wait and harvest after the first freeze, which concentrates the sugars in the grapes. Look at all the wine people coming out. Look at this. I live in ice wine territory. Very expensive. It takes 20 to 30 times the amount of grape. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because it's, it's concentrated. It's less juice. You're going to need more grapes for that. Look at that. Look at all the wine heads in here. I love it. That's why you guys are the best. Here we go. The Left Cross from Puncher's Chance. Now, Puncher's Chance is a source bourbon. Um, the Puncher's Chance, I think, comes out of Green River Distilling. 
It's one of the brands that Green River does. Um, it looks like this is a 14-year-old straight bourbon whiskey finished in Jamaican dark rum casks. Um, so 14 years old, 48%, 96 proof. Uh, the back of it uh, says it's rare finishing of the finest 14-year-old bourbon in barrels that previously held award-winning flavorful Jamaican dark rum. The result is a knockout punch of deep, rich caramel brown sugar capturing the very essence of Jamaican spirit. Um, bottled by Puncher's Chance, Kentucky Straight Bourbon in Harrodsburg, Kentucky, distilled in Kentucky. So I was going through my mind. I'm like, who has a 14-year bourbon that was previously aged in dark rum casks? Now, you could think Fourgate off the bat, but I don't know if they've aged anything that old in a dark rum cask. So when you think whiskey, when you think of the actual bourbon where that came from, automatically something that high age, you might go to Barton immediately. They seem to have a lot of high age stock. Um, maybe, you know, maybe Knob Creek or maybe uh, I should say Jim Beam. Um, Heaven Hill, obviously we know, has a lot of uh, age stock as well with all their releases. So, you know, a lot of this whiskey could be coming from a multitude of places, but aging that Jamaican dark rum cask, that should be pretty interesting. Um Let's see here. Sounds really good. Second pass question. Uh, Sam Houston, 15, or Calumet. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do that head-to-head -head tonight. That's going to be one of the head-to-heads tonight. I have my Calumet 16 right here. I'll pull the Sam Houston 15, and we'll see what wins. That's going to be one of them, and I'll let you guys decide the next one. All right. Um, Castle and Key. It looks like they just uh, released, or at least – posted their label for their weeded bourbon that's going to be coming out at 92 proof i'm sure there'll be a big line for that people love their weeders um here's the back of the label there small batch weeded there you go just when you thought bartstown was done finishing in stout beer casks with the founders bottle that they did here it comes they're going right after the goose Goose Island, Barstown Bourbon Company, Goose Island, Bourbon County brand stout, 111.4 proof. Here is the breakdown. Um, it looks like they got 12-year-old. This is Kentucky bourbon now. This is not Dickel like the Founders was. This is not the 10-year the Dickel that was used in the Founders barrel. This is 12-year-old Kentucky bourbon, and they're finishing it in, that, in the Goose Island, Bourbon County stout barrels for 13 months. So cocoa, baked cherry, it looks like vanilla cream. Um, I think being that this is not Dickel, this will probably sell out even faster than the uh, than the Founders one. As good as the Founders one was, as much as I liked it, that you put the Goose Island with a 12-year Kentucky whiskey in that bottle, you're looking at probably about 160 bucks for that bottle. That thing is gonna fly for sure. Not even not even a question. Sounds delicious. Give me that BCS finish. Yeah, you guys want the BBC. What are your thoughts on the founders? Um, are you talking about the founders Chattanooga? You're talking about the Chattanooga. Oh, the founders, um, the founders uh, Barstown Bourbon Company one. I think it worked out great. I actually really liked the coffee chocolate note to go along with the um, the like the charred orange rind that you get from the high aged uh, George Dickel whiskey. I didn't really get a lot of dickle on it. I know some people did. Some people did. Some people are really sensitive to it, though. Um, I look for, like, how it works with the finish. I think it worked great. This, though, sounds like it's going to be on another level. A 12-year-old Kentucky bourbon in those Goose Island casks? Fucking sign me up. Shit. Have we determined whether or not any of this Castle and Key stuff is Marianne stuff? Um, yes, it should be. Now, I know their first release was, but the, the first bottled and bond bourbon, I believe, was her stuff. The weeded bourbon, not so sure if uh, she was involved in that. I would assume she was because um, this was the year. This was the year. If you go back and watch the movie Neat, she says in that, like, this is going to be our bourbon, you know, when it's going to be done, you know, 2022. And that's where we're living right now. So if I would assume that that's the two mash bills that she worked on. Whether there was anything beyond that, I don't know. But definitely the first bourbon that came out, that high rye, was, I'm sure was definitely hers. Uh, this weeded bourbon could be hers too. I would I would assume so. But you never know. Um, shout out to Chicago with that Goose Island. Actually, did you guys see the uh, the, the the Bourbon County Stout 
you know, release uh, news. I don't know if any of you guys saw that. 21090 did a live stream about it last night about the new releases. Um, pretty, pretty interesting releases, pretty, uh, pretty unique flavor, um, uh, flavor, you know, I, I guess like the flavor names that came out of it. Um, and I don't know, I'm, you know, those sell out every year. So looking forward to getting those. I don't know how, you know, like jacked up you guys get about the Goose Island County Stouts, but I happen to like them. I don't like every single one, but. Uh, let's see, Joseph, have you tried the old L four grain? Yeah, I think it's even better than the double week. Definitely worth a try. I'll have to try that one, Kyle. Um, let's see here. More BBC Taterade. No, it's definitely Taterade. I'll give you that. Um, let's see here. Master Drum, speaking of beer, how is the Imperial? Oh, yes, Todd. So a little side project that uh, Scott and I are working on. Scott is working with a local uh, brewery in Wisconsin called Salhala which is making some fantastic beers. They made an Imperial Stout and they're finishing. We worked with uh, the guys at Fourgate. They took one of their uh, port barrels that was aging their bourbon. Uh, so port wine, bourbon aging. They took that barrel, they shipped it over to Salhala and they filled it with their Imperial Stout that they're making. Um, and it's aging right now. It is so far. Now we didn't get to taste the carbonated, um, but man, did it. It's taking on those port flavors. It's chocolatey. It's a little bit fruity. They're probably going to let it sit in the cask for another, I think, another three months, maybe maybe for a November release. We're trying to figure out how we can possibly, you know, use one of our distributors to get this out to you guys. But it's going to be a hitter of a beer for sure. Yep. Yes, beer in Wisconsin. That's outrageous. Who would have thought? Um, let's see here. But I personally never enjoyed anything she's had a hand in. Buddy swears by her at Watershed LE. Maybe a sample will change my mind. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Marianne is she obviously is amazing in what she does. She's brilliant. Um, but I think some of the brands that she's kind of associated herself with has kind of I don't know. You can kind of take or leave it. I think the whole Sweetens Cove thing kind of left a bad taste in people's mouths because you're basically overpaying for blended dickel which is, you know, high priced and, you know, people saw right through that. Um, I mean, she, she's done some work with some uh, local distilleries doing custom blends, including Watershed, like here in Ohio. I did like that one. I thought it was pretty good. It was very cherry, uh, which is something, which is a note I never really found in Watershed. So the fact that she was able to bring that out in blending, I think just kind of plays to what she's good at doing. But you know, Castle and Key is kind of her baby. So I think that's really her legacy until all that stuff ages out and we get and we move on to other whiskey being distilled there that really doesn't have her name on it anymore, or at least began with her name. Um, but yeah, I would like to see her, you know, stick with the distillery and do something, you know, you know, on her own. Um, but Honestly, there's probably more money in consulting. There's probably more money in consulting and doing custom blending for folks than working at a distillery. And that's just the way it goes. Um, let's see here. I don't know. I thought the Castle and Key sucked and that was all her. Okay. Yes, we are all ready for some football. The Hall of Fame game tomorrow. Uh, Raiders versus Jacksonville. No Trevor Lawrence, so we don't get to see him you know, play. But usually the starters don't play in those. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, okay. couple more labels here. Actually, just one more label. We, don't, we haven't even seen the 2022 ones yet, but here are the 2023 Mark, Maker's Mark Wood Finishing Series. We have the 2023, the beep. The beep. <laughs> An expression with prominent wood sugars bringing forth strong notes of vanilla, caramel, and sweet spice. Uh, this one's going to use 10 virgin toasted French oak staves. So all French oak. All French oak on these staves. Um, strong notes of vanilla, caramel, and sweet spice. I mean, of course I'm interested in this one, but just like based on those tasting notes, it doesn't really feel like anything I haven't tasted before. Um. I don't know. I feel like the beauty of those those Maker's Mark finishing series uh, bottles is, you know, they they kind of exude something different 
that doesn't sound different to me, but I guess we have to taste it to find out. So um, beep. Can't wait for that one. We'll see what happens. Women of Whiskey is just picked out that bar sound up. Haven't cracked it yet. Glad to see you're sipping on it tonight. You're about to get into this. Women of Whiskey should be going live right after me, guys. So get ready for that. ADSC is going to have a field day with the beef. <laughs> yeah, he is. You know he is, Derek. Oh, my God. Yeah, got a roadrunner for the mascot. Loop, loop. Should have done two. Beep and bop. <laughs> yeah, what was the F-A-E-O-2? Yeah, that one was delicious. Terry, I love that you used the word delicious. You the man. Love it. Um, yeah, eventually an R2-D2 has to come out. I'm just saying. It, I'm just saying. Um, all right, let's get into this uh, discovery. I'm sorry, dis I'm used to saying discovery. Fusion, the Fusion 7 going against the Discovery 8. So here's the breakdown of the Fusion 7, guys. Here we go. 50 pour, uh, blah, blah, 50 pour, 50 pours. Let's do 50 pours tonight. I'm only kidding. 54% of the three year, 21% high rye bourbon from Bardstown Bourbon Company. So that's the majority of the blend. 10% of the three year, 60 corn, 40 rye mash pill uh three years old on that one so uh it's kind of like a high rye corn whiskey which is kind of cool um six percent of the three year bardstown corn uh 60 corn 26 rye 10 percent wheat and four percent malted barley so that's a three-year four grain from bardstown bourbon company six percent of the blend in that then you got a big old 12 year kentucky 78 10 12 so that's probably the same stuff that's going to be going into the uh the goose island so if you're thinking 12 year 78 10 12 i mean that's pretty much heaven hill just saying <laughs> so yeah 78 10 12 there and then you got a 12 year uh 75 13 12 so 75 13 12 also 10 percent of that blend and that could either be beam or uh, wild turkey on that one. So there's a lot going on in this blend. Um, let's see. Beep equals barrel entry proof at 110. Uh, Beep is actually the very latest Maker's Wood Finishing Series release. So why is it saying 2023? I guess maybe that's a new one coming out then. Maybe that's the one that's going to follow it. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. All right. Um, yeah, Fusion Series 7, uh, 98.1 proof. So this has a little bit of a higher, a uh, little bit of a higher um, proof than I've seen, I think, on, on some of the Bar Sound Fusions. Let's see here. Let's see if we get it here. Um, yeah, it's this is a crazy, um, it's a crazy uh, blend. All right, let's see what we got on the nose here. Well, let me go back to the stream. Richard Pendleton, holy shit, dude, fifty dollars super sticker. Thank you so much, Richard. Cheers to you. Bringing the bringing the hotness, the fifty bucks. Thank you so much, man. Had the Fusion Seven, Discovery Seven, the Collab Rum Barrel, Distillery Only, and the Wheat. That's only for the tour. All of them were stellar, says Larkin. Um, Larkin. I love that you have uh, Mr. No Reservations up there on um, as your icon. One of my favorite, one of my favorite chefs of all time, and a, a, an absolute icon. So believe it or not, I'm actually getting more of the youth on the nose on this one. I'm getting a lot of corn. Yeah, I'm getting like dusty corn. Trying to see what else I could pull out of here. Shit. Um, let's see here. Hey, what's up, Brian Mackey? Nice to see you, man. Brian Mackey in the house. Uh, let's see here. Um, just making sure I got all that right. Yeah, 98.1 proof. Got it. And this bottle is 65 bucks. 65 bucks for this one. 
And I think that's kind of been the um, the one thing that people kind of I don't know about your area. You guys let me know in the chat when it comes to the fusions. Are people buying them up? They're usually sitting sitting on. If you get Bartstown in your, if you don't get Bartstown Bourbon Company in your area, I get it. I'm talking about the folks that actually do get it in their state. You know, do, do fusions usually sit on the shelf, or do people buy them up? Because I sure as hell know the discoveries sell fast. Hey, what's up, Tunes Twenty One? Again, I'm getting a lot of almond, stone fruit. Good amount of oak on here too. Not overpowering. It's very sweet. Again, a little bit of candied orange. Maybe like the slightest hint of chocolate too. Mm, a little bit of like burnt caramel. It's a good amount going on in this nose. Hmm. Um, always on the ABC shelves in Alabama's disco on the main floor at Binnie's lately fusions on, on shelves. Hey, do you, do you meet up around Columbus visiting a friend soon that lives there? And I'm starting a channel. would like to get a drink and chat about your methods. Drinks on me, of course. Uh, yeah. Hit me up on Instagram. I mean, I don't normally do meetups, but I, you know, I hang out at, you know, bars here and there sometimes. And Georgia, still a bunch of disco five on shelves with some disco six, really. Um, they sit on the shelf here along with the Discovery Series. Wow, okay. Fusion 7 sitting on the shelf, price around 57 I have to go to about two states over, but always see them on the shelf. Okay, interesting. So, so far the nose, you know, the nose to me isn't overly complex. It's not blowing me away, but it's got a nice balance to it, as you would expect a good Fusion to have. Let's try it. Here we go. Honestly, for me, the, the palate matched the nose for me. I got a lot of almond, got a lot of citrus, got some corn sweetness, burnt caramel, maybe even like along the lines of like a toffee a little bit. Man, it's sweet. And it's it's definitely, it leans, I don't know what it is about like the theme tonight, but I'm getting a lot of like stone fruit tonight in some of these bourbons. A lot of just like sweet, like peach or apricot. Even like a little uh, candy apple, too. It's not a stone fruit, but apple. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just keep going back to almond. This is nice. It's a really nice bourbon. The problem is, it's 65 bucks. It's sub 100 proof. It's good. I'm not going to say it's going to blow you away. Is it worth 65 to me though? I don't know. I don't I don't think so. I think I'd still I'd still probably rather buy a rare breed or a Russells over this. You know, the one thing I'm always impressed, though, with Bardstown is how they how they blend these. The blend, I think, is great. It's very balanced. Um, it's got a nice spicy finish to it. <clears throat> you know, I'm starting to get like a, like a note of honey. It's very sweet, very sweet honey, orange, almond. There's nothing like overly dark about it. I think obviously the more the youthful notes are in here rather than those deep dark notes. I think you get the more of the oak on the back of the uh, the back palette, a little bit of the finish and the barrel tannins and the spice all come in the back end of this while the front is all sweet. Again, like apricot, apple, honey. Yeah, man, I just, I don't, I don't know. It's a, uh, It is very good. Man, is this getting sweeter every time I go back to it. I'm trying to think what this reminds me of. 
I feel like it reminds y'all, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of like Penelope. So if you've ever had Penelope, Penelope has like that four grain like mash bill in it. It goes very sweet and depends on the blend. It could go very um, like apricot. It can go a little cherry, a little honey. It's reminding me a little bit of what Penelope does. Now, Penelope is not using some of the older whiskey that we see in here, but it's giving me those vibes. It's giving me the vibes of like a good Penelope. I mean, the batch proofs are usually higher than this, um, like higher in proof, I should say. But it's it's kind of along those same vibes. Honey, tea, citrus, orange, a lot of uh, like some corn sweetness. There's a little burnt toffee and some uh, some some uh, some oak on the back end of that one. It's a solid blend. I don't think it's a it's a game changer, but it might be more of the one of the more interesting fusions I've had in a while. I'll give it that. Yeah, it's a nice blend, but for sixty five, unfortunately. There's too much competition at that price point to warrant spending 65. Um, you know, it, it's like I'll ask you guys in the chat if it was the other way around, if 54% of this blend was the 12 year Kentucky whiskey rather than the three year old high ride bourbon from Bardstown, would you feel better about paying 65 for this? Because I think that's the real question. Because they give you the breakdown. That's the wonderful thing about Bardstown is they, they're extremely transparent about what's in this bottle. So it's 65 now. Now, if it was if it was 65 bucks, but 54% of that was a 12, one of the 12-year bourbons, would you be more apt to buy it for 65? And I'm not sure if you guys would, because Discovery series still seems to sit on shelves for 130, and that's all high age whiskey. So what are you guys saying in the chat here? Um, Master Drum EC12 red label against the green label old fits behind you. <laughs> uh, EC12 red label. <clears throat> oh, the Elijah Craig red label, like the old 12 year. Could do that. Um. Hence it why it sits on shelves. Clyde Mays, Reserve 110, better at 60. The rest of the year, I'm buying all the Lucky 7 I could find. That's a smart business decision, honestly. Penelope 80 Proof doesn't have that spice. Yeah, the Penelope 80 Proof doesn't. I'm talking about the uh, the barrel strength Penelope. Uh, 100 says, yeah, taste matters. I'm bottle killing my Lucky 7. More 12 in it, yes, I would pay 65, says Blind Squirrel. Okay. If you flip the mash bills, it would now be a $150 bottle. <laughs> That's probably true. Probably true. Yeah, nothing 80 proof is really going to have spice. It's just going to be an easy sip and burn, and I agree. Of course, that would be on par with 12 years on the market. Yeah, but to Ben's point, if they flipped it, it would probably be a more expensive bottle. Um, uh, guess different pals. I think the blend is awesome. Yeah, it's a really good blend. I just don't think for 65 it's better than, like, you know, a uh, – a, you know, a, uh, a wild turkey rare breed or even a Four Roses small batch select, which people very rarely talk about. I think that's a $65 bottle. I think that has, I think that packs more punch than that Bartstown, that Bartstown Fusion. Who knows? Maybe this needs time to open up a little bit. I'm starting to get a little bit more age on the back end of it. This could open up to be something a lot better than what I'm tasting right now. Just right now off the cuff right now. Well, you know, let me pour a little bit here. I'll do a big pour. I'll let it sit. We'll go back to that one too. Let's, uh, let's let that open up a little bit too. And let's go back to that Ben Holiday real quick before we get into the Joseph Magnus. And then we'll do a couple of uh, head-to-heads here with you guys. Oh, yeah, I agree with you on that, Kyle, for sure. If the review of Bart Sound is good on this channel and IBN, I buy it. John, what did uh, what did Chad and Sarah think about that uh, that that one? Um, yes, that's yeah, that's what I thought. It definitely reminds me of Penelope Barrel Strength. Yep. 
Oh, the Evan Williams 12-year red label. Got it, Darrell. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. There's nothing rational about whiskey price and value is personal. People pay $300 for ETL for fuck's sake. Yeah, I mean, I get that, Alan. I, I get that part. But, you know, for you know, for people that aren't inclined to just buy every bottle they can, I mean, some people do price check and they try to find out the best values. You still got to think value sometimes. I mean, even though if it's a – I mean, I feel like you can't compare like an Elmer T. Anything Buffalo Trace I think is like a separate category. Because people will pay stupid money to get any of those bottles for whatever reason it still may be. They don't have one. It's basically scarcity. You know, we all know this. Um, but anything else on the shelf, I feel like, doesn't get like the, you know, the, the, the Buffalo Trace love. You know, people are willing to way overpay for Buffalo Trace. And it doesn't matter what bottle it is. I mean, Blanton's, Elmer T. Lee, you know, 90 proof. You know, 90 proof uh, bourbon, uh, it, it could be a 80 proof. It doesn't matter. People overpay for Hancock's. That's an 80 proof bourbon. It does, it's just, it's Buffalo Trace. It's whatever Buffalo Trace is, people will to overpay for it. I think people look at the market differently when it's not Buffalo Trace. Aside from special releases, I'm just talking about shit that's available on the shelf. Buffalo Trace is kind of held in its own category because it doesn't matter what I say or what anybody says. People are overpaying for those bottles because of scarcity. That's it. Uh, let me go down here. Let's see here. Old Forester 1920 is about that price. You think it compares? Yeah, Old Forester 1920 definitely has more punch, I think, than the Bartstown. But we'll see how it goes. I've seen Benchmark 8 on an allocated shelf. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Because it's Sazerac. I haven't I have not said it yet. People paying 300 for ETL, a sub 100 proof whiskey. Yep. Give me Bird Dog 70 or 88 proof for $25 all day long. The last EH Taylor small match I saw was a hundred bucks. Yeah, exactly. What's the trade value on a handle of ancient age 80 proof? Um, just paid forty dollars for EH Taylor's single barrel at Kenwood Liquors in Illinois. Well, that is a damn good uh, store right there because you got it for actually single barrel. I think that's pretty. I think that's less than retail. Shit, was it on sale? I sure it wasn't small batch, Dean, for forty bucks. It's a nice blend. It is. It's a nice blend. I don't know. I need more time with that one. It's good. I don't think it's mind blowing. Maybe because I like the Discovery so much. All right, let's go back to the Ben Holiday. Yeah, the Ben Holiday is still grain forward. It's still floral. I think a little bit more citrus came out as it sat. All right. Hmm. It's getting like more lemon and and uh, there's almost like a sprite aspect to it now, like lemon lime. This thing is this thing is nuts. I have to go back to that when I'm not like trying so many things because every time I take a sip, I get something new out of that whiskey. All right, before we do the head to heads, let's get into this Magnus. Oh baby, America. Uh, I love that we can get Eagle Rare and Serena on Amazon Fresh in two hours. Amazon Fresh in two hours? Are you serious? <laughs> Was hoping you open the barrel bottle or the Hughes Bell of Bedford. Um, let's see here. Uh, ben, just reach out to them on Instagram. They're pretty responsive for sure. I like that OG, the mass and drum. You got to be getting lit with all the bourbons. No, actually, yeah, feeling fine. Small pours. Um, not everything is high proof tonight, so feeling okay. Now, this Joseph Magnus cigar blend. Holy hell! So, if if you guys don't know about Magnus Cigar eighty five yet. 
Um, I have it pulled up here. This one. This one was named Cigar Blend Blues. 121.94 proof. Uh, according to Nancy Fraley, this is by far the bluest and most berry forward of any cigar blend batch to date. So this is how in detail she gets. Juicy notes of blackberry cobbler, vanilla bean ice cream, blueberry pancakes, with rich maple syrup, jelly donuts, powdered sugar, more dark berry notes, cinnamon, raspberry tart, almond flavors, biscotti, cappuccino, marzipan. Rye spice coupled with dark berry notes. Holy hell. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can only hope to get to that level one day. I will say this. It is very, very, very berry forward. Now, whether or not I would be able to pick up all those berries. But holy shit. It really, it literally smells like a blueberry muffin. Immediately, I got blueberry muffin on the nose. I also got the rye spice. Yeah, blue berries. I need to get this to ADHD whiskey some somehow, or at least give him send him a big sample of it. He will fucking flip over this over this bourbon. Where is the Magnus available? Joseph Magnus unfortunately isn't available. You know, too regularly in spots. Remember, you're still looking at a, an older MGP whiskey, um, so there's not a lot of these that go around, but they do release. You know, anywhere from, um, you know, five to ten batches at a given time. It seems like they're releasing more lately. Um, just keep an eye on the websites and see where their distribution is. I could I could maybe see if it says here. Um, find our spirits. Doesn't really say exactly where. You have to just kind of stores. Than 100 miles. I mean, it does come out here in Ohio, but it does sell fast. Um, yeah, Kentucky, Michigan, uh, New York. Um, it looks like Florida's on the list, maybe. I don't know. You have to kind of kind of do your search. But yeah, and it's random. It's like. Tim Evans totally nailed it. It's a random type of drop. You just don't know when they're coming out. And when they do come out, you have to be first. Now, depending on where you are, they will sit on shelves because these this is a $200 bottle. So, folks, and that's retail. Sometimes you'll see it for $300, $400, even more than that. So, cheers to Magnus here. That's ridiculous. As good as the nose was, the palate is even. I don't know about all the shit that she wrote, but I definitely get blueberry muffins. I get raspberry. And on the very, very end of this one, I get like a distinct like raspberry, like bubble gum. And um, man, what is that other like little note I'm getting? Oh, that one I got like, you guys like ever had like a chocolate covered blueberry? That's what I get into this one. Chocolate starts coming out. The more you sip this, some of the darker flavors have come through. I mean, holy shit, this is so good. It's just dark. It's rich. It's very fruit forward. I mean, if you guys like fruit forward bourbons, I mean, this, this, I, I don't know if I've had one that this, that's this fruit forward. Except for like something like the Stag Juniors that are just like absolute cherry bombs. Um, even Calumet 15, which is a cherry bomb. Uh, the Wild Turkey 17-year bottle and bond from a couple years ago. Cherry bomb. But this is like layers of, of dark berries. Blueberry, raspberry, like really depending on your palate, what you're going to pick up here. But it's got like that extra dark like roundness of chocolate as well. Oh, Jesus. I mean, this, this batch might make my top 10 this year. It's that good. 
You know what's crazy too is like you let it just sit on the palate for like a minute, and it just like it almost evolves on your palate. It just sticks to the sides of your tongue, and all of a sudden it just it's like just when you thought you were done with the berries, here's some more berries. Here's a blueberry pancake, and it smack you right in the face with it. Psh. Oh my! I'm sending I'm sending ADHD whiskey a sample of this tomorrow. He has to have this batch. He'll be like blueberries, blueberries, blueberry. He's gonna say blueberries for like seven minutes straight. Oh my god! That's easily the best whiskey I've had tonight. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, uh, one thing I wanted to get into tonight a little bit here before we get into our heads to heads was some of the ridiculous. Now, you know, you guys must get because you follow bourbon, you read bourbon articles, you probably get like uh, a lot of clickbait articles on, um, you know, just, you know, bourbon articles in general from whether it be Up Rocks or whether it be, you know, Whiskey Advocate or, you know, any online, you know, uh, <laughs> any online site with a spirit section. So one that I came across uh, the other day, which is completely ridiculous, um, was, was this one. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, and here it is. <clears throat> this. The 25 smoothest bourbon whiskeys of all time. Smoothest. Like this one, it kind of like for me was okay. You got me. I'm hooked. Twenty five smoothest bourbons of all time. Okay, first of all, what's the criteria? How are you even judging this? This this is, I mean, this is as clickbaity as it gets. So I went down the list here. Um, so let's take a look at this. Bourbon Heritage Collection 17-year-old barrel-proof bourbon. I reviewed that bottle. That bottle is not smooth. It is a flavor monster with spice and proof. So where they got smoothest bourbons of all time on that list? Um, yeah, no. No, not smooth. That's, and that's what I mean. Like, how do they constitute smooth? Um, then it goes to this. <laughs> so from Heaven Hill 17, which is probably one of the best releases I've had this year to this still house America's finest from Tennessee, smooth and endlessly drinkable. Two things that set still house black bourbon in a celebrated category. Like what? All right. We get to high West American prairie bourbon. Now, High West American Prairie, to me, has some spice to it. I don't know if I would constitute it as smooth, but okay. Then we get to Frey Ranch Single Barrel Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which are generally cast strength. Is that smooth? Like, where are they getting smooth from? Uh, we got, uh, we got, we got the, 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 the dating sites in the house again. Wrenches, kill them. Kill them. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I, okay, so Frey Ranch, this, this is like, I actually feel bad for Frey Ranch being on this list. I don't think Frey Ranch is smooth. I think it's bold. It's flavorful. It's in your face. It's, I mean, it's, it's delicious. I wouldn't say smooth. Heaven's Door Bootleg Series. Which is a fucking like six hundred dollar bottle. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure where they get. I can't say I've tasted this, so I can't even say if it's smooth or not. Um, okay, Angels Envy cast strength bourbon. Uh, like what? I, I I just don't. I don't see. Then they jump to Four Roses Al Young 50th Anniversary Small Batch. I literally just drank this, you know, a few days ago with Scott celebrating his birthday. It was super oaky. It had a long, lingering spice. That does not constitute smooth for me. I mean, I don't. This is this article 
is probably one of the craziest ones I've ever seen. Um, Great Jones Distilling Company Straight Bourbon. I can't say I've had that. Um, it's I know it's a distillery in New York. Um, it actually, you, as you can see, it has like that old school New York, almost Great Gatsby vibe to it on the label. Can't say I've had it. Um, okay. W, okay. Weller 12 year. Yes. Yes. A weeded bourbon. That I could see you saying it's smooth. That's the one that I agree with. <laughs> Uh, then it gets Booker's Bourbon. When's the last time any of you had a Booker's Bourbon that was smooth? Booker's Bourbon is a six-year cast-strength bourbon that fucking kicks your ass. I don't care who's drinking it. That is not smooth. I mean, some of them are smoother than others, but it's still cast-strength. Like, what the hell? Old Forrester, 150th. <laughs> like... Walter Russell's Reserve 10 year. This is another one I could tell you. Okay, this one does drink a little bit smooth. It's smoother, especially if you add an ice cube to it. Now it does have a little spice to it, but smooth. Okay. Black, <laughs> Black Maple Hill 16 year old small batch. Yeah, because you could just walk in and try that at any moment. Um, okay. AH Hirsch Reserve, another 16 year old behemoth of a bourbon. I, I, I wouldn't say it's smooth. Jefferson's Twin Oak. Don't even get me started on that shit. Um, Pappy Van Winkle, 20 year. Um, you know what? That actually is a smooth bourbon because it's 90 proof and it's, I don't think the, I think the 20 year is probably the least, uh, actually, no, maybe the 23 year is. I'm not sure. The 15 is my favorite. The 20 year, the 20 year I probably do like over the 23 year. But that is a high age weeded bourbon, and it's supposed to be, excuse me, it's supposed to be a smooth experience. Um, now they just write Michter's Kentucky Straight Bourbon, which I think is hilarious because in the actual picture, it's the 25 year, which is like an $8,000 bottle. So for them to just be like Michter's Kentucky Straight Bourbon, yet they don't put the 25 year on it. 1792 foolproof. I'm not even going to say anything because you guys that have had hot foolproofs is literally – you guys know how hot those can drink being from Barton. It's young Barton juice at full proof that sometimes can drink super hot. So the fact that it's on a smooth whiskey – like I feel bad that anybody that reads this article and actually writes these down because this is fucking – it is. It's a comedy show. There's no way. Widow Jane the Vaults at 14 years old. Okay. I mean, I've had it before. It's very oak forward. It's smoky. I don't know if I would say it's smooth. Kentucky Owl, and they go to Bourbon Batch 9, which is probably one of the better batches ever conceived that they ever made. Um, I don't know if I would consider it smooth. Barrel Bourbon Batch 9. I mean, they're literally up to like number 33. Who's finding 9 right now? I know this is like the 25 smoothest of all time, but even at all time. Bullet barrel strength. Smooth. Smooth. Willet family estate bottled bourbon. Willet bourbon is anything but smooth. Willet is spicy, in your face. Okay. Woodford Reserve. Yes, I would say this is smooth. I get it. Watershed bourbon. I didn't even see that this made the list. This is in Columbus, Ohio, uh, based that you know, based on the fact that it's a pretty easy sipping bourbon. I would say that's smooth, and 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 that is the like, like what the fuck? Like I'm reading these, and then that had me like go down a rabbit hole. I was going down different uh, articles trying to see what I could find. Who like who else is making some of these ridiculous? Um, uh, you know, all these fucking crazy, you know, articles. And then I think, was it you, Kenneth? And then Kenneth Rathburn, I think, sent me another article. Um, let me see here. Did you send me that one? Let me see. Um, yeah, so I didn't pull this one. Out. Yeah, so Kenneth sent me a guide to bourbon, underrated, overrated, and budget-friendly. Um. This is from Cool Material, which is another website, kind of a 
fashion website, and it went through uh, what bourbon is. Most underrated bourbon. So Wild Turkey 101, definitely agreed with that one. Noah's Mill. Noah's Mill Genuine Bourbon. That's from Willet. Um, Nika Coffee Grain Japanese Whiskey, which is not a bourbon, yet it's on the list. I, I, I'm, t- I'm shitting you guys. This shit is not made up. This is not made up. Nika Coffee Grain Whiskey, Japanese Whiskey, is on a list for most underrated bourbons. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull this one up real quick. Um, let's see here. A guide to underrated bourbon. Cool material. Let's see if this pops up here. Yeah, here we go. All right. I'm going to share this real quick. We'll run through this and then we'll get to the, uh, to the blind or the, uh, the, the one-on-ones, I should say the, uh, the head to heads. Um, here we go. So here is this one. So now we're looking at, um, oh, let me get rid of that ad. A guide to bourbon, underrated, overrated, budget friendly. Here we go. What is bourbon whiskey? Takes you through that. Most underrated, Wild Turkey 101. I'm like, okay, good start. What do you? What else you got? Noah's Mill. Okay. I can see that being underrated. People generally don't talk about that bottle. Um, and then it hits this, Nika Coffee Grain Japanese Whiskey. Okay, so this is a bourbon all of a sudden in your eyes. Okay, all right. It's literally a Japanese single malt, and you're saying it's on the list of underrated bourbons. All right, cool material. You lost me. It gets to Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare underrated? Um, I feel like they haven't drank this bottle in a long time or seen one, but to say it's underrated is pretty laughable. Then we get to most overrated. Bullet bourbon. Is it overrated? I don't know if it's overrated. I never really hear people speak highly of it. It's generally used for a mixer, uh, but it is one of the top selling bourbons in the United States every single year for that reason. Um, Knob Creek nine year overrated. I don't think it's overrated. I think if anything, it's underrated, but that's my opinion. I just don't see people thinking or talking about Knob Creek nine year very often. Um, And look, as you could see, you could buy it for $447. That's one special ass bottle of Knob Creek Nine Year. Cool material. Get your shit together. Maker's Mark. Um, as far as an overrated, again, it seems like they're picking some of the best selling bourbons in the United States and just kind of giving it a label of overrated, uh, which I think is interesting. This one's thirty dollars. Uh, Weller Special Reserve, which you can buy for eighty five in certain places. Um, I think people do pay overpay for Weller Special Reserve, but okay. Uh, Budget-friendly bourbons. You have Woodford. I agree. Larceny. I agree. Old Forester 100. Probably one of the best values on the market. And Four Rows a small batch. There you go. That's the list. But the things that stood out is a Knob Creek 9-year for $447 and uh, Eagle Rare being uh, somewhat underrated. And Nika Coffee Grain Japanese Whiskey, which is a single malt being qualified as a bourbon. And holy shit. I just... I, I don't know... Who writes these? Who's if they're just asking people like that work there to just throw a fucking list together? I I it it boggles my mind. Okay, let's do our first head to head tonight, guys. Looks like the dating site is more legit. <laughs> oh shit! I, I can't even. Uh, okay, so while I'm pouring, I'm gonna pour the Calumet 16. And the uh, I'm gonna grab the uh, the Sam Houston 15. While I'm doing that in the chant, uh, in the chant, in the chat, let me know what other ideas you guys have for my next head to head before we call it a night. So here we go. Okay. All right. So Sam Houston 15. Going against Calumet 16. All right, now, I mean, I'm not going to do these blind because I don't have any markers right here to do it right now. But uh, what I will do is I'll just give you kind of an honest assessment of what I like better. Uh, same way I did it with the uh, the Elijah Craig's the other night. So let's see who wins on the nose for me here. 
Now this Sam Houston though, this is a uh, this is the Kentucky because they do different batches. This is the KY dash one batch. This is the KY one. Uh, just got here to catch the list. Funny stuff. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. No, I'm I I feel fine, man. Nothing's nothing getting to me. Are those acid wash jeans? <laughs> no, I don't have acid wash jeans. <laughs> I don't think I've ever owned a pair of acid wash jeans. Actually, no, that's not true. When I was in my band, I think we did wash. I think we did wear acid wash jeans once. All right, nose. Here we go. The Sam Houston 15. The thing about this one is this is right up my alley. It's a little bit dusty. It's a little bit butterscotchy. Little butter peeking. Good amount of cherry, too, on this one. <laughs> Jason, scroll up. You missed my super chat about smooth. All right, horses and bourbon. Let me scroll up here. Sorry, man. Um, oh, my God, the price for that Knob Creek. Yeah, exactly. Okay, horses and bourbon. Smooth is when you wipe your butt and the TP doesn't <laughs> <coughs> okay, you got me with that. I did not expect that. All right. So nose on Samuelson 15. Ooh. The Calumet 16 is a little bit oakier. Definitely a little bit more on like that sweet tobacco note. A little bit more chocolate. A hint of cherry, but not as much as the Samuelson 15, at least in this batch. And you could definitely smell the spice on the Calumet 16. Look at the, the difference here. Uh, this is the Sam Houston. I think the Calumet 16 is just slightly darker. Slightly. Just, just a touch. Even looking at them this way, yeah, the Calumet 16 is slightly darker. And that makes sense, even on the nose profile. All right, let's go to the Calumet 16. Calumet 16 hasn't really changed too much. It still has the oak, the chocolate, all that presence, the spice. The spice is what makes that Calumet 16 such an interesting bourbon for me. I love the spice from front to back. It's not a flavor monster uh, by any means. It definitely, you know, it definitely brings some good flavors. But I think the, the older age whiskey notes for such a cheap price or a cheaper price, I should say, especially with so much going on from front to back with the spice is really what makes it. Um, let's go to the Sam Houston. Oh. The Sam Houston, honestly, is my profile. It's just – it can go either way, honestly, guys. It just depends on what you like. For me personally, this Sam Houston KY1, that's my profile. It's – Spice with butterscotch, a little bit of a dusty note to it. It's what I was hoping when they blended this, it would lean toward. It wasn't overly sweet. It wasn't overly um, smooth. This one was just, it was different. It was just a different animal to me. And I love that about this, but that's, that's my profile. So for me, I think overall... This Sam Houston 15 is still going to kind of hold a special place for me. Let's see here. Um, super excited for one of my favorite stores finally getting Smoke Wagon. So finally get my lips on the Uncut Unfiltered. That's always a good thing. Tony Bag of Donuts. Those articles are hilarious. And it's for that reason I never read them and only take advice from the Whiskey 2 Reels I know and trust. Yourself included, of course. Tony Bag of Donuts, I appreciate you. And uh, that's a nice shot of the old Fantail bottle from, uh, from that one. Old Forester 1910 and Lucky Lucky Six Year. Luck Six Year. Um, okay. Sam Houston for the win. Idaho is my favorite. Yeah, I. Yeah, that Sam Houston is just my profile. However, that Sam Houston 16 is making a run. Ooh, you know what? This has a longer finish than the Sam Houston 15. I think I like the um, the upfront flavors of the Sam Houston 15 a little bit more, but the Calumet 16 mid pal to finish, I think, gets it. So 
So what do we do? We make the old Cal Houston. We make the Cal Houston blend. We'll try that a little bit later. All right, let's go into the chat and find out our last blend of the night before we call it a night, our last matchup. All right, let me get two glasses here and see what we got here from you guys. Um, okay. The wood smoke on the 16 is one of the best bourbon nuts I've had in years. Yeah, I think that's the difference. Um, or I didn't put my microphone back on. Sorry if it felt like I was far away, guys. I think that's the difference, um, Dustin. I think just the fact that it gives you like that smoke and almost like those dark chocolate, like it's almost like it took something a little bit from Old Forester 1910 with those chocolatey like wood notes that you get that kind of, it's almost like a little bit thicker and richer. And that wood smoke note, I think from front to back that just, and the spice, I think that's what makes the Calumet 16 such a nice bourbon. Um, I think it does lack a little bit of nuance. I don't think it's got all these different layered flavors you could find, but the flavors it has, I think are very powerful, very strong, and very, um, um, very flavorful. So, all right, let's see. What do we got here? Old Elk Double Wheat versus Weller Full Proof. I kind of like that one. Um, let's see here. Cal Houston Epic. Um, what's up, Swami? What's going on, buddy? Oh, Wisconsin trip was awesome. Any fit? We, I mean, probably the highlight was cracking up, finally getting the taste of Four Roses Al Young 50th bottle that we opened. That was probably the highlight. Um, Blood Oath 8 versus Remus 5. Uh, I don't know if that's going to really work because the Blood Oath 8 is finished in those, um, in the Calvados cast, which is like an apple. So I, I think that's just going to, that's going to kind of stick out like a sore thumb here. Lumberyard versus Russell Single Barrel. It's not bad. Uh, what was the one that? What was the one that? Um, that. What was the one that that Darrell said earlier? Evan Williams twelve versus what? Evan Williams twelve versus what was that one? Um. The old, old Matt Cigar versus Elijah Craig in your left shoulder. I forget the name of it. Um. Horsey versus Butterfly. I love the Russell Singer. Oh, the Old Fitz. Old Fitz Green Label. Um, yeah, we could do that. All right, so you want to do... Evan Williams 12 Year versus the Old Fitz. So you want to do these two head-to-head? -head? Some Heaven Hills going head-to-head? -head? We could do that. Yeah, why not? I mean, yeah, 101 proof versus 100 proof. So they're pretty close. Do you have any Barrel King? Barrel King versus Smoke Wagon. Oh, that's a good one. You know what? I might do that right after. I just got to find where the hell did I put my Barrel King bottle? Um, okay. Let's do this one real quick. All right. All right. Old Fitz 13 year versus Edmund Williams 12 year. This is 101 proof. This is 100 proof. Classic Heaven Hill. This one's actually a little bit more dusty, a little bit more chocolatey, a little bit more of a dusty corn on the Evan Williams. The Old Fitz is sweeter. Again, it's a sweeter weeder. It's a sweeter weeder. Jason, do you have Stag Junior Batch 9? If so, put that versus ECB. Okay, I do have Stag Junior Batch 9. I will do that. That will be my last one of the night. Got you. I like that one. All right, let's try this. The 
The Evan Williams 12 year was all chocolate cinnamon, chocolate cinnamon, and a little bit of toffee there. Cho yeah, mainly chocolate cinnamon, which is delicious. A little bit of that, like that dark roasted peanut too that you get from Heaven Hill. Let's go to the old fits. Surprisingly, I'm getting a little bit more spice from the old fits, being and you know, being it's a weeder, that's surprising. This is more on the buttery side of things. Oh, it's this. Why? Coming off that, I took a sip of that, and I got chocolate coffee all day long. Anytime I get chocolate or coffee, anytime I get chocolate or coffee, I'm uh, that's going to win for me. It's not even... It's not even a question. I've never gotten that chocolate coffee note before, but coming off of this, I'm getting it. Wow. Evan Williams, 12 year for the win. Look at that, baby. Uh, they drop this in the in the gift shop uh, every now and again. Um, and they're, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty pricey, but this thing is just an, and you can even see in the color, if I move this aside here, it's way darker. This is the Evan Williams 12 year versus the old fits. I'd much rather pay the money for that, at least for this, for that year matchup. I will say though, the old fits 15 year was a special bottle. All right. So uh, I'm going to blend the uh, Evan Fitzgerald. We'll have that next. <laughs> That's just making some fun blends here. Uh, all right, so the last one we're going to do tonight, Stag Junior Batch 9. Somebody remind me what proof that is. Stag Junior Batch 9. Stag Junior Batches. I can't remember offhand. Um, what was the proof point on that one? Batch 9 is, well, I... No, I need the – oh, here we go. 131.9. All right. I'll be right back after these messages. Well, that was a lot easier to find than I thought. <laughs> it's literally it was like in front of my uh, – it was like on the front of my – because I don't know if you guys noticed, I, I, I switched out the Buffalo Trace barrel. And I filled it with wild turkey. Buffalo Trace is over there now. Wild turkey over here. I feel better about it. So here's Stag Junior Batch 9. One of the best batches that they've ever had. Um, there it is. I have a good amount left. 131.9 of Staggy Goodness. Uh, and you guys wanted me to put it against this Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. 139.4 Batch 11. You guys, now you guys are trying to get me like a little bit uh, messed up tonight, but here we go. Batch nine of Stag Jr. versus Elijah Craig Pirate Bottle, batch 11. Next, um, Sweet Lisa 22, Barrel King versus Smoke Wagon. I'll do that next week. Promise you. I will keep that one in mind. Here we go. Stag Junior Batch 9. God, that is such, such sweet, sweet oak on these Stag Juniors. I think Stag Junior, and if you find it at retail, and Eagle Rare 10 are probably the best, the best uh, values you get for your money with when it comes to Buffalo Trace. Oh, but this, this is Elijah Craig on the nose with that dusty, funky oak. Jason doesn't have to work tomorrow. He's a drummer in a rock and roll band, folks. Uh, the Saline 786. I'm not sure how you found out my secret, but okay. Sorry, guys. I keep forgetting to uh, – my overhead uh, mic here uh, ran out of battery, so I have to go with the, the lavalier tonight. This is like sweet versus funk. That's That's all it is. So let's see what we get on the palette here. God, 
it's liquid candy. It's absolute liquid candy. Cherry, strawberry, spice, a ridiculous amount of like rich, like toffee, vanilla. Oh my God. I forgot how good batch nine is for Stag Jr. I still think batch 12 is the best batch ever. I don't care what anyone says about the newer batches. You want to say 16, 17, 18 good batches? No. Nope. Batch 12 is the best Stag Jr. batch of all time. I don't care what anybody says. It's the most rounded. It's the most flavorful. It's got the perfect balance of oak, sweet, spice, and proof. Everything else after that has been either overly sweet, overly hot, or just not cohesive. I think batch 12 is where it's at. Oh, holy hell. This wins. This is very, very delicious and very sweet. But this is, it's its just another level of bourbon. It's darker, it's richer, it's bolder. I mean, all right, let's make a Stelijah. <laughs> all right, we're going to try our three blends before we call it a night. Uh, next week, guys, we're going to have uh, another fun blind in store. So we'll see how those goes. It does. It's it's about the depth for me. It's got to have depth of flavor. If you're a one-hit wonder, if you come in just sweet and not much anything else, you bore me. Give me the depth. Give me the depth of flavor. And if anyone out there that's in the chat has had any of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club picks, you know we look for depth in all of our picks. It's not a one-hit wonder. We don't just want sweet. We want depth. We want richness. We want spice. We want uh, a long finish. Here we go. We're going, we're going with the, uh, oh my God. Oh wait, first this is the, this is the, uh, Cal Houston. Let's try the Cal Houston. That one didn't work out so much. It kind of killed, it kind of killed best of both worlds for each. You know, Cal Houston did not work. All right. This is the, um, what did I say this one was? Was this Evan Fitz? Evan Fitzy? <laughs> what did I call this one? That one actually worked out kind of nice. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. I still feel like it could have been better. Last but not least, Stelijah Craig. That is a beast of a bourbon right there. All the funk in the oak that's in front of the Elijah Craig barrel proof, the old batch, gets replaced by the sweetness of the stag. But then the finish is still the Elijah Craig, all the funk. If anybody's looking for ideas for Blend Again, and I might have just given you one. All right, guys, we'll head on over to Women of Whiskeys. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight on the Master Drum Whiskey Room, this Whiskey Wednesday night. Make sure, please, hit the like button before you leave. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you have not subscribed yet. Definitely share the channel with, uh, with, other, with your friends and anyone else that's into whiskey. Again, trying to hit that milestone, that 75,000 subscriber mark. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers. Love you guys. Thanks for hanging out tonight. I'll see you next week right here. Same bat time, same bat channel on the Master and Drum. Let's go Mets. Cheers, guys.